Okay, well, this is a second part of the um, ANSYS Rigid Dynamics tutorial. We're going to change one of the members from rigid to flexible and look at the dynamic stresses. So this was the uh, the basic model. Again, this is uh, um, something that's easy to make, easy to see, um, made specifically to uh, make it clear on how to work the software. So. Uh, what did we have here? We had a, uh, for loading we had gravity, acceleration um, uh, 386.4, and uh, joint displacement. We had joint, uh, the translational joint. We had an X displacement, uh, magnitude, uh, it says tabular, so you'd look over at the tabular data. So in 50 seconds, it went 50 inches. So that's... Um, I think what else did we have? We had the uh, translational force here as an output. Maybe we'll take a quick look at that. See if that works. Yep. So that, um, as it's extending, uh, calculates the force on the uh, translational joint to extend that uh, under the uh, just gravity load. Uh, so that's really what we did on the previous tutorial. So in order to uh, do a flexible run, we need to get out of mechanical and close that and initially we did a rigid dynamics run so now we're going to have to do a transient analysis so we'll grab those three cells so we'll use the engineering data geometry and the model uh, so we'll go ahead and open up uh, mechanical again you don't want to leave mechanical open you have to close it uh, um, you know, when you do this uh, switching uh, between uh, dy <coughs> rigid dynamics and transient. Okay, um, so the analysis for time step, uh, so you have to realize now it's, you know, solving the stiffness equation uh, at every step. So we're just going to do, uh, let's see, we want to go 50 seconds to get the full motion. And so I think we'll do it in 50 steps. So we'll just do uh, time steps of one, one second. Um, we'll go ahead and use the same acceleration that we had before. We'll use the same translational joint displacement as we had before. So those are the two loads. Uh, and for the output, um, I guess we can, you know, use the same two that we had before again, but we're really just going to be looking at, yeah, let's go ahead and um, do the uh, stress and a von Mises stress. We'll solve for that. Okay, so really, oh, we got to make that uh, joint, this one right here, which was that, uh, let's go to corresponding body and tree. Okay, so that was the pivot arm. So we click on that and we go down here and we can see that it was rigid. So now we'll switch that to flexible. Okay, so we're really ready to do a solve then. So this should take about five minutes, so uh, we'll let that crank a little bit. Okay, so um, it looks like we're complete and um, what do we got? Uh, so we'll take a look at the, um, the stresses. And um, so it does give the uh, stress contour plot. Uh, we'll look at the uh, graph of that. Uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, 100 frames in, uh, let's say, 10 seconds. Kind of animate that. Uh, let's increase the color a little bit there. Yeah, okay, Let's see what that looks like. Of course, the critical thing or the important thing here is 
a lot of times in complicated mechanisms you don't know uh, what uh, you don't know the statics real clearly and you may not know the worst case position so uh, letting it calculate all the positions and viewing this uh, you can uh, uh, more conveniently zoom in and uh, identify what the uh, worst case position is and um, so that's about it thanks for watching